Welcome fellow songwriters to the seventh installment of my series a Songwriter's Notes on Songwriting. Uh, I'd really appreciate if you'd leave comments below, both positive and constructive, and uh, it would really help me a lot. And uh, please also subscribe to my YouTube channel where I'm regularly posting uh, videos of new songs uh, and a few older ones from time to time too. Uh, I thought I had finished talking last time about lyrics, but, um, and that we'd go on to melody today, but I realized that I forgot to discuss rhyming, which is a really important thing and something that uh, most people um, are curious about. Um, uh, so I'm going to take uh, today to, to look at that before going uh, on to melody next time. I'm pretty sure we'll, that's what we'll do. Uh, so... As usual, I really don't want to say what you should do. It's an open world in songwriting. Um, and this series isn't about being prescriptive, as I've said many times. Uh, maybe you'll invent a new rhyming scheme, or you may prefer not to rhyme at all, which is uh, perfectly fine and can be very effective. But why would we rhyme in song lyrics? What are, what are the rhyming... Um, why are there rhyming elements in most songs, popular songs? So let's start with that. Um, last time I stressed that the most important thing to keep in mind about writing lyrics is that they be musical. The lyrics themselves have to be musical. Poets recognize this without any uh, music attached to it. They pay, a good poet pays attention to the music of the words. Uh, your lyrics need to have a music of their own, and obviously they need to mesh with the music, uh, the music music, okay? The most important element of doing this for sure is the rhythm of the words, which I talked about last time and should correspond uh, to the song rhythm, but also have the occasional departure from that so as not to sound too kind of squared up and fatigue the ear, okay? Um, if you do, if everything is too regular, it can start to st sound stale, okay? And that's a really important overall message that I have to you, uh, both in music and in, in lyric writing. Alliteration is another kind of musical tool um, uh, that we can use with words, as I mentioned last time. Mouthfeel or maybe fluency um, of the words is another, um, and rhyming is a huge one too, probably second in importance, um, uh, to, uh, right after the basic rhythm of the lyric line, okay? As I said, poets rhyme, some of them anyway, uh, and, um, uh, at least some of, some of the time. Shakespeare is a pretty famous poet. Uh, what did he do with rhyming? Well, he wrote blank verse, meaning no rhyming, more than 95% of the time, maybe in, in the plays, that is. In, in the sonnets, he had a, a specific rhyming scheme that was standard at the time. But probably 98% of uh, the lines in the plays don't rhyme, okay? Um, most of the time that he does rhyme, they come as a couplet, uh, which means two lines ending with a rhyme, usually at the end of a scene or a soliloquy, okay? And doing that kind of reinforces kind of a round musical ending to whatever, say, the soliloquy or the scene. Um, the ear hears a kind of smooth finality, and it's a little bit like the... 4-1 plagal cadence that we discussed early on when we did harmony. I can't remember which episode that was in, maybe two or three. There's a music in the rhyme that works in somewhat the same way as those cadences, okay? Which again kind of put a round ending on the music to the ear. Um, so note that as eminent a poet as Shakespeare was, or Willie the Shake as I like to call him, did not rhyme the overwhelming amount of time, OK? 
Okay, so just keep that in mind. So not rhyming is perfectly fine. What's not fine is to have no musical quality to the lyrics. And I've encountered a lot of beginning songwriters who don't really pay enough attention to the rhythm, flow, all the, all the other musical elements that I mentioned in the words, okay? I think there's a really strong analogy between rhyming or not rhyming in poems and songs and staying in the home quadrant, that one, four, five home quadrant that we talked about uh, in the harmony section early on. Uh, so an analogy between rhyming and, or not rhyming, and staying in or going outside of that home quadrant. I think there's a, so let me just flesh that out a little bit. You may remember that I said Van Morrison, among other great songwriters, made a pretty good living staying mostly in that home quadrant, okay? Of, and when I refer to the home quadrant, I mean um, a wedge of three, a quarter uh, of the circle of fifths wedge. I don't, uh, I'll pop it uh, here above my shoulder for a little while so you can just uh, uh, see that, but uh, you might want to refer back to the um, earlier uh, discussions on harmony. Okay. So Van Morrison stayed very strongly, not entirely, but strongly in that home quadrant. Well, in a similar way, so did, for example, the great, great poet Emily Dickinson. Uh, she almost always used what's called common meter, and it goes like this. Okay, it sounds like a nursery rhyme because, let me give you an example, there's nursery rhymes that are like that. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Okay, almost all of Emily Dickinson's more than 1,000 poems were in that meter, okay? If her imagery and expression and use of words were not as incredible as they are, and she was truly a genius. I would say that this sounds pretty childish and can get kind of stale to listen to. So I, I actually was spending the last week thinking about why would she have done that? I mean, she was a big reader. She had read all the poets. She It's not like uh, you know, her world was itty-bitty and she only knew this meter. Uh, she had choices. I, and I don't know, I haven't studied Emily Dickinson, I'm no expert, but I'm just going to kind of offer a guess as to why she might have done that. I suspect that since she was really an incredible genius, that she intentionally made her the music of her words, that musical, those musical elements that we're talking about, that she intentionally made that so simple so as not to distract from the words themselves, okay? You just kind of immerse yourself in her one song, which kind of frees the reader or listener of the poem to tune in to the meaning of the words. And, uh, from this example, we can understand that there's a, a, an important balance between uh, to pay attention to between the various elements of a poem or a song, okay? Um, going back to Shakespeare, he did pretty much the opposite. He barely rhymed at all in the verse of his plays, as I mentioned earlier. This is because... Um, actors playing characters were speaking words as people, or kind of as people speak words, and it would have sounded very unnatural to rhyme very much of the time. Very unnatural. That's not how people speak. No one talks like that. In fact, it's well understood that his chosen meter, iambic pentameter, is the one that most closely matches the patterns and cadences of English speech out of all of the various uh, uh, meters in uh, poetry. 
So in a completely different way from Dickinson, Shakespeare's lack of rhyming also focuses attention on the words themselves, but in a way that makes them come kind of sound more natural coming out of the uh, uh, actor's mouth. Rhyming is good for reinforcing musical endings, as I said before, very much like the cadences we talked about. It's also good for remembering the lyrics. Rhyming is a mnemonic uh, device, okay, and makes it a lot easier to, to remember the line. So what are the downsides? So those are some of the positives of, of rhyming. What are the downsides of rhyming? If it's too tight or frequent or obvious, rhyming, as I keep saying, can sound really stale and sort of tire the ear, which again, you want to avoid with every element of your songwriting. Uh, this is, be and the reason is simple, it's because the music already rhymes, okay? So you don't want to pile too much rhyme in the words on top of rhyme in the music. Maybe sometimes you do, so I'm not saying there's no never or always here. Um, but just be aware that the music, in a sense, already um, rhymes, uh, like for example, with the cadences we talked about, or repeating um, uh, a, a, a line of the chord progression. For instance, when I, in, in many of my songs, in, in just many songs, period, there's often, if you have, say, a verse of four lines in it, the harmony, uh, a very common kind of chord progression will be A, A, B, A, okay? Where A represents, say, I don't know, three or four chords in a, for a line, and the second line is the same, the third line might be different, uh, and the, the fourth line goes back to the same. And that is a kind, that's what I mean by a kind of musical rhyme, okay? Uh, the cadences are another way to kind of musically rhyme. Um, and uh, so these are kind of ways of, uh, mu where musically we can be kind of squared away and, and strongly consonant to the ear, uh, just as perfect rhymes are, okay? Keep in mind that the song lyrics are not poetry. And I think I said something about this last time. The words are flowing by and the listener to a song can't stop as they can when they read a poem and go back over a line to kind of tease out or think about the meaning of, of uh, the words in that line. When I read Emily Dickinson, I have to go over things many times and sort of puzzle it out. Um, song listeners can't do that because it's all flowing, okay? So in a certain sense, the words to your song have to give way somewhat to the music. It's great to have a line or a phrase that packs a wallop, okay? But it shouldn't distract because the listener will start missing the next several lines, and you don't want that, okay? There's another more subtle downside of rhyming. It can box in and limit your choices of expression. After all, if you have to rhyme, your choices are necessarily fewer than uh, if you're free not to rhyme, okay? I've noticed too that some of my favorite songwriters, uh, including Paul Simon and Joni Mitchell, who I mentioned last time, freed themselves more and more from rhyming as they matured as songwriters. Um, and, you know, I encourage you to check out uh, some of their songs from different periods. Uh, and I think in general, you'll see that uh, they didn't rhyme as much. Um, uh, but remember that it's even if you give up rhyming or rhyme rarely, it's still essential most of the time to keep the meter of the line flowing. Okay, that's the single most important thing to do. And these great songwriters do even as they rhyme less. Meter is more important than rhyme 
by far, in my opinion. So I want to confess, I rhyme too much or more than I'd like, I guess. Maybe I shouldn't say too much. Um, I've been rhyming less as time goes by, as my songwriting has developed, but I'm still kind of drawn to it. I'm increasingly finding more freedom, though, in letting go of rhymes, and one way to do that is to use near rhymes, um, which by which I mean, I mean, there are exact rhymes, and I think you know what I mean by that. Near rhymes are simply where, they're not exact rhymes, but it's where the vowel sound is repeated, and it's a kind of compromise between rhyming and not rhyming. Um, one of my songs, Fear and Greed, uh, you can find the link in the pinned comment below. Uh, and by the way, I've now pinned a comment with lyrics to all of my songs that are posted on YouTube. Uh, but my song, Fear and Greed, uses mostly near rhymes, which I think are not quite as tiring to the ear as exact, as perfect rhymes are. Um, in my song, If It Were Us, again, the link is in the comment below, I don't rhyme at all, okay? Uh, in this song, the harmony, rhythm, and melody kind of combine for enough roundedness, for lack of a better word, okay? So, um, an example of a, a, a good song that has only a single rhyme in it, um, and, uh, the, the rhyme uh, the rhyme is uh, an, the near rhyme of pays me and crazy pays me crazy they're not perfect rhymes the consonants don't match but you hear the vowel um, and that's Dave Matthews song black and bluebird again I put a link to uh, 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 the YouTube link in the comments below Matthews doesn't rhyme uh, very much in his songs in general, which I think partly, at least, illustrates a kind of jazz sensibility in him. And again, um, in the more mature Paul Simon and especially Joni Mitchell, you find much more of a jazz sensibility in both the music and the words. Um, in a purely musical sense, uh, exploring outside the home quadrant, as well as introducing all those twos, fours, sixes, and sevenths that we discussed in the harmony section, and other exotic chords. All of that is kind of a movement towards more of a jazz sound. Now, this is still popular music, but it's kind of stretching traditional popular music, uh, and this is my personal taste, into in the direction of jazz and bringing in some of those jazz elements. Um, uh, you know, kind of traditional popular music, a lot of country music, for example, stays really quite close to the, you know, close adherence to that home quadrant. And similarly with the lyrics, you usually find that they rhyme. Um, but, uh, uh, as you get a little more adventurous, you're actually kind of bringing in some jazz sounds. Um, many of the great standards of the first half of the 20th century, Cole Porter, things like that, uh, did this as well. They incorporated these jazz uh, elements into the music, both the, the harmony and the lyrics. I recently had a chance to accompany a friend on, on uh, the great standard Fly Me to the Moon, and I noted with joy, because I hadn't played it before on the guitar, and literally every single chord in the song has either a flat or a major seventh. I, it, was, it was kind of wild to look at the uh, chord sheet of that song and, and notice that. Um, anyway, I think enough said. There's a lot more to say about rhyming. There's all kinds of rhyme schemes. You can look them up. My suggestion is to pay attention as you listen to songs to what songwriters do. Um, experiment yourself with different rhyme schemes. For me, it's there's 
there, there's kind of a feel. I, I, it, partly, I, I make a pretty conscious decision about my rhyme scheme or whether I'm rhyming or not pretty early on in my lyric writing process. But there's also a feel about kind of matching or complementing the, uh, the harmony and rhythm of the song that I have so far, okay? Um, again, you can find my lyrics in the first comment for each song I post to YouTube. I'm uh, pretty sure I'll be getting to melody next time, and until then, stay in tune.